The stock market is very mixed right across the board today. However, the one company that has caught our attention and in fact has just recently entered the S&P 500 is SMCI, which continues to fall, in fact, down around 6% at the moment. And remember, this is a company that did, in fact, not too long ago, have a 10 for 1 stock split. Now, as we can see, down 6% today and over the last six months, downward trending around 52%. And as we can clearly see, this is a company that is heading towards its 52-week low. Now, we do get a double buy rating from Seeking Alpha and Wall Street, a hold from Guam, and a very interesting 14.3 forward PE, which is significantly lower than the industry overall. So let's take a look, understand what is happening, and if this is getting more and more attractive as it does start to come down. We do also know not too long ago, it did increase around 20% and it has struggled significantly. This is both with short seller allegations as well as the Department of Justice opening up a probe. Now, one thing that we do quite like about this company in terms of recent news is that when we do take a look at their latest announcement, they said they will be shipping around 100,000 GPUs per quarter and something that is interesting, which we have covered before. When we do take a look, they have also unveiled their suite of liquid cooling products that can help firms with their data energy costs. This is really interesting. We're going to talk about their margins as well, which does have some impact. And for those that maybe aren't too familiar, we effectively saw the short seller Hindenburg take aim pretty much at SMCI and open up a very, very large short position. And this is a company that is very famous, as we can see, for taking down some large companies. We have Block as well as the Adani Group. Now, the other part that we mentioned with SMCI was that we saw the Justice Department open up a probe into this company. And in fact, a former employee did accuse them of some accounting violations. So the issues arise around whether or not this company has some accounting fraud and that could have some serious implications right across the numbers. Now, we don't have a massive amount of information yet on what is going on with this situation, but the one thing we can do is take a look at their earnings and we do see a lot of positives with this company. In terms of their latest quarter, they're up 38% on a quarter on quarter basis, on a year on year basis up 143%. However, we do have to be honest, the thing that we don't like about this company, which we will come across, is their gross margins have in fact quarter on quarter, year on year, been decreasing. Now we'll just talk about their earnings per share as well, which we can see on a year on year perspective is up. But the one dampener from this company are those margins, which we can clearly see quarter on quarter going from 17.1% from the same quarter last year down to around 11.1. As we have touched upon before, they were saying that an initial production cost on some of their new technology was one of the large reasons for this decrease in margin. And the expectation from them is that this will start to pick up, which is very good news because when we do take a look at their expectations for the full year, they are anticipating 26 to 30 billion for FY25. And the reason that we want to highlight this in today's episode, because for those that don't know, the full year of FY24, when we do come down to take a look at their income statement, they reported 14.9 billion. Let's round that up to 15 billion. And as we've just said, they expect the full year to be nearly double that. So they are on the right path for one of these companies to consider in terms of the growth expectations. But a few points that do warrant us just to take our time to truly understand whether or not this company has a large enough margin of safety before we can consider executing on the stock. As we've already mentioned, forward P is very low. In terms of year to date, they are still up 58% considering they have fallen significantly from their 52 week high, which sits at a $123. And if you are a longer term shareholder, you would be up more than 1,692%. Now, there are some metrics with this company that we do question. In terms of the free cash flow, we do notice semiconductors as a whole, cyclical industry. That is why pretty much every other year we see positive to negative in this category. 2024 looking very low at negative 4.46, but the positive is to note that trend is expected to continue. Just something to flag with this industry. And it isn't the only industry that we cover on this channel that do have those elements of cyclicality. We clearly like to see this sales growth increasing as well. And with the expectation that AI is here to stay, we should anticipate the strong growth that we have seen over the last three years to continue. As in fact, we just pointed out, they're expecting nearly a 100% growth in the full year of 2025. 
and this is the growth over the longer term. In fact, the majority of this growth spurt has come from 2021, where the top line has more than quadrupled. Now, in terms of these shares outstanding, they have diluted your position as a shareholder, although very minimally. And if you are someone who was invested in 2015, this probably wouldn't bother you that much in all honesty, given the fact the share price has, as we said, gone up significantly and significantly higher than the S&P 500. ROIC, we want 10% or more, 12% in the semiconductor space. Give us faith, Mandarin are able to effectively allocate their capital. They've done that pretty much every single year. Whilst a little bit inconsistent, still positive to report 17% in 2024, 17% on a trailing 12-month basis. As we've already gone through, not just their gross margins, but we also see their operating margins looking very poor in terms of what we want to see. We do have to give credit, though, that from 2021, it has grown and the expectation is for this to continue to increase. Ideally, for this kind of company, we do want to see around the 12 to 16 percent. So hopefully that is one that we will get consistency from 2025 and beyond. Free cash flow margin, no surprise here, given what we just saw in terms of the very, very inconsistent nature of these numbers. And finally, the net debt to EBITDA, referring to the earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization, showing us the strength of their balance sheet, 0.39 in 2024, 0.18 over the next 12 months. These are the number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand and correlates to their balance sheet strength. So no worries in our opinion in terms of the safety, but we will, as always, do a very quick analysis. Now, we also want to let you know that we have released our latest free weekly article. We drop one every single Monday where we talk about what's happened in the market, as well as some stocks that we do believe deserve your attention. So you can click below, sign up and read all of these straight away. On top of that, you will gain access to 36 undervalued stocks for the month of October. We run through quite a bit of information as well as those that sit within our portfolio. And if you do like spreadsheets, well, you can gain access to another one. In fact, 22 undervalued dividend stocks, which Wall Street believe have the most upside in the S&P 500 right now to consider. So click below, sign up and read straight away. As we've already highlighted, their revenue has grown quite dramatically and expected to continue over the next year. But we want to really show you the bottom line net income, which as we can see has followed a very similar path. The last few years has shot up very rapidly. And when we do zoom out, it's gone from 93 million in terms of bottom line net income to 1.2 billion over the last 10 years and expected to continue as we saw top line anticipated to double. So good sign, but this always does leave us a question about the probe by the DOJ, the accounting allegations, and how much of this we should take seriously. Now, balance sheet, total cash versus total debt, quick health check, as with the other metrics, has started to increase over the last few years. They now hold around 1.7 billion worth of cash, which is a massive increase from the 95 million in 2015. As always, in isolation, one number will not tell us anything, which is why we like to compare this to their total debt. That has increased 94 million in 2015 to 2.2 billion in the latest quarterly report. But as we can already see, that net debt to EBITDA did show that this balance sheet is looking very strong. And in terms of earnings expectations, well, over the next four quarters, not only are they anticipating double digit EPS growth year on year, but the next quarter, so the first one in 2025, triple digit growth. That is very nice to see. And when we do look back, a little bit of a shame, they did miss the more recent quarter by 19 cents but they do have a 75% track record of beating analyst targets. If you are happy with that, you have confidence, well, the EPS estimate of June 26 will lower that forward PE to around 11.1. Now, in terms of some gradings, first one is valuation, where they get a C+. Forward P 14.3, that is significantly lower, as we said, to the sector median. Right now, if you are buying SMCI, you are getting a 41% discount to the overall sector. And as we can clearly see, pretty much whichever valuation metric you use, SMCI in comparison to the overall sector is trading at a pretty hefty discount. Whether or not you believe you need a much bigger discount to consider this company, that is something we can analyze when we come to our valuation. But we can already see the market is making this very attractive if you believe it should be trading around the average of the overall sector. Growth, well, they get an A, always good to see, 110% in terms of the last year, 3% for the overall sector. Moving forwards, we have 65%, but given their guidance, they are expecting this to be up to 100%. Nonetheless, still a significantly better than the overall sector of 6.5%. And when we look at the growth of the EPS expected over the next five years, 45%, much, much better 
down the overall sector of 14.9. This then leads us on to the final one, which is the profitability, where they do get a D, so not great at all, and probably one of our main issues when considering this company. Gross margin, 14%. Sector is much higher at 50%. Bottom line at 8%, that is a little bit better than the essential sector of 3.62. So if they can sort the issues of their gross margins and bring this up, then I do believe this is one to seriously consider. In terms of cash from operations though, on a trailing 12 month basis, very poor, minus 2.5 billion versus the sector of 98 million. So another issue that we can see here, they are clearly burning a lot of cash. So we would also wanna see improvement for this metric. Now a quick recap for this part of the analysis, a double buy from Seeking Alpha and Wall Street where they hold from quant, C plus on valuation, A on growth with a D on profitability. Now, how has SMCI compared against others in this industry? We have NetApp, Western Digital, Seagate Technology, and a few others. And over the last year, what we have noticed, it has been one of the better performing, but we can also see this industry as a whole has performed very well in terms of performance. Over the last five years, SMCI, no one has come anywhere close, and that is pretty much the same to be said over the last 10 years. Now that is very well to see the past performance, but we should never use this as a judge of how it will perform in the future, just one level of analysis we like to consider. As always, we just wanna highlight its comparison to the S&P. Nonetheless, even after the massive drop it has had over the last year, it is still up 64% and outperformed the S&P. Over the last five years, in terms of the same comparison, and over the last 10 years, the S&P doesn't come anywhere close. Now, whether or not you believe they can continue that momentum, that is something to consider. But as always, you can also think about a low-cost ETF that does track the S&P 500, like Vogue. Now, the final two things that we haven't touched upon yet are inside and institutional movement. Insiders, well, 17.6% ownership, 54 million worth of sales over the last 12 months. But we do note over the last quarter, or the more recent at Q4, as well as Q3, there has been no real movement, no buys, no sells. You have to go back to Q2 where there was 1.1 million worth of sales. And just for transparency, even though we do believe it to be outdated, we can in fact see the more recent one was the 3rd of June where the director sold around 30,000 shares. In terms of institutional movement though, that sits at 84%. We see around 29 million worth of sales over the last 12 months, but we see it pretty much double the amount of buys at 56 million over the same time period. And in terms of the more recent quarter, we haven't got enough data yet, but in quarter two, we see more selling than buying. Quarter one, we do see the opposite. So overall, institutions are in fact buying more than they are selling. However, the more recent data does show us they are doing the opposite. Regardless, never solely rely on them and always, always do your own due diligence. Now let's jump into the valuation for SMCI. As always, if you do enjoy the content, value is being provided. Smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. Now our intrinsic value of $53, we've ultimately just used the DCF model where we have essentially the free cash flow year on year. We have the average growth, but this is very skewed given the fact it does go from negative to positive pretty much every other year. So we've gone for a growth rate of 15% moving forwards, where we have the low, medium, and high rate, which we can touch upon shortly. So with the 8% discount rate, we do get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value. Add together with the cash, subtract total debt, get the equity value, divide by the shares outstanding, and we have our intrinsic value in today's episode of $53, which gives 20% upside. Now remember these numbers are subjective and you can grab a copy of this model by clicking on the pinned comment below where you can run your own numbers through whether it's for SMCI or any others that you do desire. Having said that, we will just show you for transparency. However, for those that believe 10% is more appropriate, we can in fact see we get an overvaluation signal indicating 12% downside. And for those that believe 20% is a lot more reasonable, we do in turn then see the intrinsic value at $72, giving this 63% upside in today's episode. Now at the 15 cent point, we want to take that through to the final slide. And as always, 10 cent margin of safety, execute on that, wide moat, strong financial metrics, and good forward-looking data. If you believe that, we'll buy pretty much up to around $48. Then we keep going, and what we notice in today's episode, we deem around a 15 cent margin of safety for SMCI. Is that enough with the DOJ Pro, with the accounting allegations, with the short selling from Hindenburg, or do you need a little bit more to consider? Remember also the gross margin issues. Hopefully that is something we can see them turn around because a lot of their metrics for this company do look very, very promising. 
Now, for those that want a larger MOS, well, at 20%, a buy at $42, 25 around 40 and at the 30 percentage point, around $37. As we said though, today's episode, 15% MOS, although we do notice Wall Street do not agree, they have a $65 price target over the next year. They see upside of 48% and they do believe this is one to seriously consider, especially if you don't have any exposure to this in your portfolio. As always, give us your thoughts in the comments below. Is this a buy, a sell, maybe a hold? If you enjoyed today's episode, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button. Don't forget to sign up to the free weekly newsletter by clicking on the pinned comment below and coming joining us in the Patreon where we do talk about our weekly buys and sells. As always, have a great day and we'll see you all on the next one.